Hi, welcome to the Tadi TV. My name is Jean Bor Bobak. I will be your host today for this edition of the Situation Room. Um, the Tadi Award has a tradition of highlighting um, different queer film festivals from across the globe. Um, and so we would like to continue this tradition uh, with this uh, Situation Room today. I will have two guests um, um, for the coming 90 minutes. The first guest that I'm going to have is Sadat Munir, who is uh, representing AX uh, International Minorities uh, Festival. And we're going to discuss um, the history of the festival. We're going to talk about their aims and goals. And of course, we're going to talk about the challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic is posing for them. So, hi Sadat, welcome to the Teddy TV. It's a pleasure hi. to have you here. Um, yes, so maybe let's just start with you introducing um, this uh, very special festival and uh, telling us about the history of it and how did it all start. Hi, um, well, it's a festival called Arcs International Minorities Festival, and uh, it takes place uh, in two different countries. It takes place in, in Denmark, where I'm based, and it also takes place in Pakistan, where I kind of inheritance from. So the festival started back in 2000, by, by the end of 2014 and 15, to, uh, and uh, it was just a, uh, you know, initiative taken by uh, uh, a few volunteers uh, of like Pakistan, local Pakistani uh, queer and trans people and then some diasporas like me. Uh, the main objective of the festival is to host a safe spaces where we can screen films uh, with dialogues. So, so we, we, we focus on films that can lead into certain dialogues. Uh, we've been doing festival for past uh, five years. Every year we have had a, um, we, we, in Pakistan, we covered several different cities. So, so we have had the festival in Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, and uh, recently we started also in smaller cities in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. So, so the, basically festival is not officially part of the, the Pakistani art scene. Uh, we are more of independent and we try to do it uh, in a in a more DIY style so so so, so it's a community based festival led by trans and queer people and uh, and our audiences are all sorts of people uh, people from queer community people from trans community people from artist community journalists everyone who's interested in uh, you know, being a part of a dialogue. So, so, so it's a very much of a theme-based festival. So, so yeah. we choose themes every year. Uh, like we've, we've had the uh, 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 topics like uh, brown feminism, uh, yeah, trans people of color, uh, 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 cinema made by authentic people or pe cinema made by people, native people. So, yeah. So, so so yeah so we we focus very much on 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 what kind of dialogues we want to create right could you describe us the the socio-political context in which you organize the festival i mean it's of course interesting because it's a dual festival uh, geographically um but yes i was i was wondering about this socio-political situation in which the festival is organized so, so well, since I already explained, we have festival both in Denmark and Pakistan. So the socio-political context in Pakistan could be, uh, uh, since Pakistan have a, a is a, maybe a one step ahead of uh, when it comes to transgender rights. So, so the so festival is is kind of a legacy of that law that they acknowledge transgender people. So and and transgender people, trans community, so more 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 or less as a as an as an umbrella term which covers uh, other parts of the LGBTIQ spectrum. So so the but but a the 
the, the kind of uh, festival we do in Copenhagen, that's uh, more or less for people um, because uh, we have lots of other uh, different film festivals out here as well. Like uh, uh, we have an LGBT film festival as well. But the reason we think uh, there should be a festival that more uh, focus directly on uh, people of color, diasporas, refugees. So, 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 so we can we can talk about being a, you know, living alternatively or have, having a being a minority in 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 the Danish context as well. So, so those are the two different social, uh, political, environmental sort of concepts we work with. Yeah, the intersectionality of the festival is is very interesting. Can you tell us a bit more about that aspect of of this festival? Well, as in. in in, in Pakistan, we, <clears throat> uh, since it's, um, um, well, when, when it comes to, in, uh, since we, we are a festival that, that in, we intersect with the other minorities as well. For example, in Pakistan, we, we have, uh, we, we, we kind of uh, focus on religious minorities as well and, uh, and uh, women rights organizations. So, so the human rights aspect uh, that almost covers uh, not only the LGBTQ uh, issues, but but uh, any issues, but but then again, it, the festival is run by trans and uh, queer people, so so that 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 you know give a good overlap to it. So that's what, that's how we uh, yeah. intersect with, with, the, with different minorities. Yeah. So when assembling the program year by year, what are your main considerations that you take into account? Well, um, <clears throat> well, yeah, it's it's different from place to place. I mean, I'm uh, I I'm, kind, I'm not like fully in charge of the decisions. So so we can right. we have a team of, team of people, and we have all our different choices, different priorities. Uh, but but for me personally, it's very important to keep that in focus. That we are screening films that is more or less relevant to to the topic we want to screen it to. Uh, for example, um, if we want to focus on, 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 the, on the films which are made by, uh, uh, for example, a film uh, about people of color and made by people of color, so, so that then we can have a discussion about it. Or if we see a screen a film that is not made by, uh, or, or, a, or a person who played a trans character is a uh, sister who plays a trans character. So we can we can have a dialogue about it. Why it is important to uh, to 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 have those kind of notions in mind uh, while watching cinema, and what what makes difference to have a, those political issues in 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 account. So so for. We 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 do not rely on the films as in years like uh, those. It, it, the films has to be kind of a world premiere in Pakistan or mm, on, in yeah. Copenhagen. We focus on whatever is relevant for us and how we can make uh, you know further the dialogues about acceptance and uh, you know tolerance uh, within the society. Yeah. So I would like to ask you: How did the pandemic affect your work? with the festival well, it completely shut down the copenhagen version so so we did not we did not have any festival last year in copenhagen but uh, in pakistan it kind of we, we have like you know i mean we prior even prior to uh, pandemic we were facing a lot of issues uh, back in 2019 uh, uh since tiktok and all the other you know very flashy social media platforms are very popular so, yeah. so there's a huge talk and there's, there's, I mean, it's both negative and positive. There's a, there's a lot of visibility of true queer and trans people through those platforms, which brings, you know, uh, positive effects, but also a lot of negative effects. So we had a lot of resistance from the mainstream audience uh, or mainstream people in Pakistan where uh, trans people are even more trolled and even more, you know, subjected to violence uh, mm. through those social media. So we had to take care of, you know, uh, we had to, you know, use certain measures that we are not, uh, we are not, you know, being too loud to create any sort of conflict in the society. So, so we were already uh, keeping it low. Then pandemic happened. 
so we had to go even further back. So, so, so our plan was to do festival a little bit more political and keep it uh, to, to the mainstream cinemas, but that didn't happen because pandemic came. So, so we started uh, screening films in private homes. We started screening them, films in you know smaller cafes uh, or or, 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 or NGO offices. So, <clears throat> and that brought us a, a, a completely different kind of audience uh, group as well. So now yeah. uh, we created something called Ax Outreach, so people can actually write us an email, and uh, we have a package of films. Uh, we have created three programs uh, in, with uh, different short films. So people can just stay, you know, it's almost like a, a video rental sort of system. So we don't charge anything. We just give them uh, five to six short films and they can watch it with their friends and they can click a, a photo or two and send it to us and give us their feedback, what they thought about it. So that was really popular through, throughout mm -hmm. the 2020 because, uh, yeah, it was locked down. So people needed, I mean, people were at home and they wanted to, right. you know, have have some access to cinema and alternative cinema. So we reached out to lots of people, lots of friends of friends, family, even like people from my family. They started like uh, show us the films you show uh, during festivals. So, you know, it, it kind of created um, a very family sort of atmosphere to our festival, which was sort of positive in a way. Yeah. But, but, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we didn't have any public screenings and they, uh, uh, so that was kind of a negative effect of a pandemic. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm wondering about how do you see it? What are, because now you talked about it, uh, about the positive effects. And of course, uh, there are some very obvious negative effects as well, um, that uh, a lot of these festivals and a lot of programs have to at least partially migrate to online spaces. Uh, I'm wondering how do you see it? Um, what could be really an advantage for the future and what could be a really big disadvantage for the future if we consider that festivals would have to run in this hybrid format? Yeah, well, and uh, what this digital version, uh, I mean, of course, uh, in this part of the world where, uh, you know, we have certain privileges, we have access to whatever resources are needed to, to, to right. have digital screenings. Oh, and then again, we have audiences who are, who are privileged in, in certain ways. But when we look at Pakistan, so, 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 so it's, it's kind of very mixed. We have also people who, are, who have got like certain access, access and privileges, but then we have also another hand we have we we cater uh, like almost like fifty percent of audiences are they come from a lower income households and many of them they never had any schooling so so that's why when we do public screenings uh, it's not only public screening as in going to cinema it's more like you know creating safe space people can come in and watch films and film can be any language we do live translation. We, create, uh, we provide with uh, our audiences with uh, transportation, food. So those kind of things are lacking. And, and, and if we go digital, so we will, we will lose those audiences. And, and, that's, and, and the reason we started X Festival, that was our main motivation was to create certain inclusion in, uh, for those people who are, who've been underprivileged. I mean, if 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 I go directly back to our history of the festivals, I I, yeah. I, I made a film back in 2012, and I made a film about transgender community in Pakistan, and and the main protagonist when she came for the world premiere in Copenhagen, the uh, right after the, after the screening, she she said it to me. She she told me that uh, we need to have those platforms in Pakistan as well. I mean, she was surprised that uh, her being a trans person was allowed in a cinema or not allowed, but were welcomed in a cinema in a way. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's something she had never seen in Pakistan. So this, this was the main motivation to start the festival actually. And, it, and if pandemic happens uh, and, and things, are, things will go digital and you know, virtual, so, so, so those people who don't have those privileges to, get, to, 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 to access those things, it right. will be a big loss there. Yeah. Um, 
tell me, um, do you have or like what are your impressions about um, the queer film scene in Pakistan right now and especially in light of this ongoing pandemic? Well, uh, but we don't really, I mean, of course, I mean, uh, there are not so much queer cinema as in, but uh, there are, I mean, for, for actually during pandemic, since people had a lot of time, so a lot of people, they started creating content, um, mm -hmm. especially on trans, uh, transgender rights. They had a lot of uh, smaller short films and, you know, like interesting videos were made. So that is being done. And also through Axe Festival, we have created uh, uh, something called Axe Save. Uh, it's, it's, it's just like Axe Art or Axe, Axe Promotion thing where we fund local filmmakers to to make a queer film or something like that. not completely fun but just like sort of some sort of seed money so so they can they can start producing it and uh, there was um, we've been very lucky there was uh, this uh, uh, online uh, net note it's almost like lgbt netflix uh, of asia called gaga Ulala. they sponsored that award so see so we yeah. awarded one of the lucky filmmaker who is going to make a film about the uh, LGBTQ and yeah, yeah and, but there so yeah the content is, is being produced but 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 yeah I mean uh, then again resources are not there and then we have also uh, sure. you know, very strong censorship in Pakistan but India is creating a lot of good stuff I mean it's it's amazing whatever is coming from India and it's also very relevant because we share the same culture same language yeah. and all that so, so it's, it's really positive there yeah, that, that definitely sounds very exciting. Um, yes, so with this ongoing pandemic, um, what do you think? How do you how do you see the future of, of your festival? Do you have a strategy in place to uh, to 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 continue the work maybe in this year and and the, and the coming years? Well, um, I'm I'm sort of uh, you know taking us backseat uh, when it comes to Pakistani version of uh, yeah. uh, uh, festival it's just it's not because it's just for my own political reason because I, I was thinking if I'm not living there permanently I, I should not be doing it like all the time so so uh, yeah. my, my my friends and my and my colleagues they are taking it over and and they're like young people and they've got like a lot of brilliant ideas so for for, for right now, they are doing a lot of outreach screening where they are, you know, gathering up together. I, I, like I just heard like a, a few weeks ago, they were up in the mountains and we just for the picnic sort of thing. And they, 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 they took the projector together and there were like 30 or 30, so 40 trans and queer people. They, they watched film together mm -hmm. and they call it yeah. night. So, so they are doing the sort of a, you know, pop-up sort of a, yes. uh, events but 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 uh yeah the main festival we are we are also you know money is also important so so we have to look for some sort of money to to organize it uh but but right now uh, it is not you know one peculiar kind of strategy for it uh, we we are just we, right. we're, we're seeking out and seeing who, who wherever we get some sort of resources to organize yeah uh, festival uh, in Copenhagen, we are we have sent our applications and we're waiting for the, the things to get normalized. Otherwise, we'll be doing a lot of virtual things. Uh, we are also thinking about doing a virtual conference with the uh, uh, queer film festivals from Suana region, uh, like uh, Southwest Asia and Northern uh, Northern Africa. So there are lots of uh, festivals similar to us so we call each other like sister festivals they're like uh, this like uh, Turkish FM Hayat from Turkey and Maujuddin from Tunisia uh, yeah. and there's one festival from from uh, Palestine as well so so we're trying to you know f yeah find out something together maybe do some digital kind of uh, uh, workshop or, or, right. or yeah those kind of things yeah networking is also key um particularly for for the type of festival uh, that AX is also. Um, how do you manage uh, with keeping up 
uh, the networks and widening these networks under the current circumstances? You know, uh, right now it's all digital. So, so, so we have got like, uh, uh, Axe Festival is part of uh, two different networks. One of them is the one I just mentioned, the uh, Swana right. Regions Network. And the other one is called Asia Pacific Queer Film Festival Alliance. And uh, it's it's uh, an uh, alliance which has actually more than 28 festivals and mostly from Central Asia to Australia and uh, Hawaii and those kind of, you know, it's all, the, yeah. all the festivals around the Pacific. And that's quite strong in network as well. Uh, so say so yeah, we have a we have a we have some sort of online platforms where we communicate with each other, share knowledge base, uh, share films, and uh, yeah, and also yeah, uh, support each other's festival as well. Right. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we also have this session. It's uh, open for comments from um, from the audience. So I would also like to point that out, um, that uh, commenting is possible and we are also welcoming questions in, in case um, if, uh, if somebody would like to. Um, yes, um, I would also like to ask you um, how, um, like, uh, there was a few years ago, actually, I think it was a few years ago, a talk um, at the Schwules Museum here in Berlin, where uh, the festival was also represented, and you were talking about this concept of uh, artivism. Um, so can you tell us a bit about this concept and how it plays a crucial uh, formative role in the festival? Well, actually, the whole festival is based on the concept of artivism because, I mean, uh, we we showcase art. Uh, we have films. We have uh, arts, like performing arts events. We have uh, uh, installations, exhibitions, and 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 all of those are relevant to 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 the topics we have chosen to work with. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, artivism plays the main role both in Copenhagen and also in Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's also easier for us to negotiate with the uh, with the certain laws and you know and the hurdles in 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 both regions, like also in Copenhagen and also in uh, Pakistan, where where when when you when you you know, we kind of you know uh, subtle the the dialogue way it, it when it's when when it comes with a film or or an art piece or a performing art so so we 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 can get through it easily we can convey our messages more easier uh, when yeah. when we use this uh, as as a, as a source to, to 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 talk about things yeah i see um looking out on on a global uh, perspective um what are the trends um in queer filmmaking um that you find uh, particularly fruitful um uh, in the recent years sorry i didn't get your question um about like global queer film trends like themes and approaches both thematically or formally um uh, did you notice anything that you think is very powerful or very refreshing uh, from the recent years? Yeah, I mean, in the past, past few years, not only in queer films, but just uh, just generally, uh, we, we are seeing, I mean, uh, a lot of changes and a lot of, you know, uh, yeah. uh, a lot of people are coming out and being vocal about the, the traditional filmmaking. You know, uh, yeah. for example, uh, sees people playing friends, characters, uh, we've been tolerating it for so long, and now finally we we are able to talk about it. And and the same with like, for example, um, let's say like people from the privileged countries making films about underprivileged countries and and shedding mm -hmm. light upon those topics in their own way is also not right. This is also something we really need to work on. Yeah. So. So the trends are changing. Uh, we're getting more and more. Uh, yeah, we're trying to be more and more political correct, but it's we are not yet not there. Hopefully, I mean, one day uh, we'll be hundred percent. But but yeah, say uh, I and queer cinema is actually one of the you know 
it's it's already revolutionary enough. So so maybe in future we'll we'll, right. we'll put our goals. Right. In a way, um, with with all this um, difficult situation in place that uh, the pandemic uh, brought us. I was also feeling in a way that uh, queer film festivals, uh, maybe online or half online, half uh, real life events, they also fulfill a kind of function of caring for the community. Uh, what is your view on that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a it's queer film festival. I mean, film, I mean, if you, if you look at, Film festivals, uh, for for instance, for 15 years ago, they were considered to be uh, a space for academics or a space for, you know, a, like a cin cinema freaks or film buffers. But now, uh, it's I mean, queer film festivals are uh, more of a safe space where people can just like hang out and and feel comfortable, watch all kind. I mean, get in, in, informed about stuff. Um, I've, uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of film fest uh, queer film festivals, uh, they are spinning films which could not have been seen and elsewhere in the world. Uh, yeah. That, so, 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 yeah. And and then again, it, uh, queer, well, many queer film festivals, they also uh, like uh, our events off during the festivals are also creating, you know, community. It's, it's like a community service, like. Uh, for example, we do dinners in our festivals together. Yeah. Uh, we we go picnics together. So it's it's just like building families and you know uniting queer culture or uniting queer people and creating a unique culture of it. Yeah. So. Well, Sada, thank you very much for thank joining you. us today and sharing um, all your thoughts. Um, it was really lovely to have you here and in the. Uh, name of the entire Teddy Award team. I wish you all the best for the future with the festival and we can't wait to see um, how it's gonna develop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Yeah. Bye.